Hey everybody and welcome to another Chairman of the Board ranking video. This is where I take a look at the last five new to be board games that I've played and I rank them from my least favourite up to my most favourite. Now before I get started on these five games, I want to give a shout out to the show's sponsor, keyender.co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer. And if you use the link in the show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. At number five, I have Clank Catacombs. Now this is a kind of remake of the original Clank, but instead of having a fixed board, you have a modular board where as you travel along this map, um, you know, more spaces are appearing, creating new pathways, new opportunities, uh, and the like. Now, if you're not familiar with what Clank is, it is a deck building game where you are not only trying to, of course, gain more currency to get better cards, more combat ability to fight these monsters on the board, um, but also you are gaining movement as a resource, which will, of course, let you move around the board to visit these new locations, get points in different ways. Now, it's been a quite a long time since I played the original Clank, and I must admit I was never a big fan of the original Clank, and a big part of that is because deck building games generally don't do it for me. Uh, I've got nothing against them per se, and I think generally they all work. But I find them a little bit samey and a little bit tedious, a bit monotonous. Now, sadly, I don't think there's been that many changes since the original. I think maybe the modular board makes it a bit more interesting because at least you've got that kind of excitement of what you're going to discover next. But you still have got so much luck when it comes to what tile you're going to come onto next. Maybe there's something great there. Maybe there's not something great there. Uh, and even the same comes with um, kind of top decking things and um, getting little chits that could be great. They could be mediocre. So I find it a little bit swingy in that respect. Now, I do like the kind of clank mechanism where certain cards or actions will throw clank into this bag, which will basically... Um, simulate noise being made um, and then you being attacked if you if your particular cubes are drawn out of the bag later and that wasn't a huge factor in the game at least not for me and because I'm, I tend to be a little bit more reserved when it comes to creating noise and stuff because I want to have that safe guarantee that I'm going to at least make it back to the base which is again another pressure point in the game that I do like the fact that you will not score unless you get back to somewhat close to the base and you can even get some bonus points if you go right back to where you started which I actually managed to do so um, you know I like the concept I think the gameplay just feels a little bit too deck buildery it feels just like anything else with a slightly different veneer on the top I can see why people like it um, there's certainly nothing wrong with that and I don't want this to sound negative because again it's perfectly functional but I'm just not sure if the gameplay and the mechanisms are that suited to my own personal tastes so that is Clank Catacombs at number five. At number four, I have Gang of Dice. Now, this is a Reiner Knizia push your luck game um, where you are rolling as many dice as you like from your pool, uh, trying not to hit certain kind of um, figurations of dice. Maybe you don't want to roll ones or threes. Maybe you don't want to go above a certain limit. Now, some of these um, restrictions each round will be an instant failure. So if you hit those particular criteria, then you'll be knocked out of the round. Or some of them will allow you to re-roll dice in kind of a Yahtzee style mechanism. Um, I do like the twist on the push of luck where you generally want to be below certain thresholds or not hit certain things. So the gamble is how many dice you're going to use because you know more dice means... You're probably going to get closer to those limits and have a higher figure, but the chances of going over are much greater. It's all about trying to, um, you know, be as close to those limits as you can, because if you roll more dice, then you win the tiebreaker and will hopefully win the round and win everybody else's dice that have been used. And it's all about who's got the most dice at the end of the game. So I love that mechanism of winning everybody's dice or putting up front about how many dice you're going to use and pushing your luck that way. But I did find the cards each round were a little bit too restrictive and generally you were sitting on two, three or four dice per round. I would have liked to have seen that open up a little bit more and maybe some other cards come into play because mechanisms wise I think this game is awesome. But the cards themselves are just a little bit too restrictive and you can't really do much and wager with that many dice anyway because the odds are so, so high that you are going to hit those particular um, criteria and just be knocked out of the round instantaneously so I wanted to like this one more than I did um, 
I'm willing to give it some more tries. It does feel very similar to a game called High Score, um, which, again, you're just rolling dice against different objective cards. This is kind of like an inverted version of that. Again, I like the concept of mechanisms more, but I think the push your luck aspect is just a little bit too reined in because the odds are too high of failing. So that is Gang of Dice at number four. At number three, I have Zert. Now this is part of the uh, GIF series of games that I have been playing uh, recently. This one is definitely one of the weirdest ones with an incredible table presence. Although not, the components aren't terribly functional, um, I have to admit the look on the table just looks so polished and so sophisticated. I just love the way that it feels and that all the components are. As you are, um, you basically have this hex of these little kind of discs. And as the game goes on, you're going to be populating these discs with three different coloured marbles. And the objective is to try and collect, I believe it's uh, three white marbles, four grey marbles, or five black marbles, or I think it might be three of each, some combination like that. Um, mechanisms wise, it's simple, where all you're doing is you're placing a marble on the board and removing one of these discs, therefore the board automatically becomes tighter as the game develops. But if there is ever an opportunity where a marble can jump over another marble, then you are forced to make that move and collect the marble that has been jumped over. Now, the strategy of the game is a little bit obtuse and a little bit opaque, um, and I haven't played this much at all, so please do take that into consideration. Um, it kind of feels like you're just going through the motions and not really knowing what you're doing and just hope that it works out in your favour. I'm sure I'm playing this at a very low level at the moment, so maybe some more uh, layers of the game will start to unravel as I play it some more. Um, but right now I'm struggling to find where the real crux of the game is, even though I am sure it is in there somewhere, um, because you do kind of have to think a few turns ahead to force your opponent to make moves, so on your turn you're forced to jump over them. And I do like the fact that if you can make a jump and then you can make another jump, you can have this kind of cascading domino effect of collecting several marbles at the same time. It's weird, um, it's quite fascinating, and it definitely has kind of grabbed my attention in terms of wanting to go back to it more and more to really find and um, extract where that gameplay is, because again, I do think it is in there somewhere, but right now I must admit I am struggling to find it, uh, despite it looking so incredible on the table. Definitely one of my favourite looking games of all time. So that is Zertz at number three. At number two, I have Pioneer rails. This one caught me by surprise actually because you know, I've played a lot of flip and right style games over the years. This one I thought would be another generic one but it's not. This one is actually a very polished uh, root building style game that has this cool uh, poker hand system as each round there's going to be three cards that come out into play. They're going to be kind of standard playing cards really. Uh, the first player is going to pick one of those and then the other players are going to get one of the two remaining ones. And the, there's two bits of information you're taking into consideration. Number one is the, uh, the kind of the rank of the card, uh, and those those ranks like the, you know the kings, the queens, the jacks, the tens, the aces, and um, will go into a separate box at the bottom and will form poker hands. The better poker hand you can get, the more points you'll get for that round. And the um, the suit of the card will show which kind of mini game you can play on. Not necessarily mini game, but which region of the board you can uh, start. Um, you know, exploring from. And what you're doing is you're drawing lines along these predetermined routes, trying to visit these different locations. Um, if you touch a certain number of edges of these locations, you can unlock their abilities. For example, you've got like gold mines, which will just give you points. You've got banks that will let you deposit the gold you've collected and get bigger multipliers. You've got some route building multipliers by connecting these towns together. Um, lots of different things uh, like that, even some like um, sectioning off the board by trying to ranch and herd up these different cattle that are spaced out on the board. So very clean mechanically. Um, I do like this idea of what do you want to do? Do you want to keep on exploring the same region? Do you want to keep on uh, kind of um, panning out from the different regions and touching the initial buildings? Um, but at the same time taking into consideration those poker hands, which can actually be quite a significant part uh, of the scoring. I find the game very breezy, I think I find it very intuitive, uh, it's got enough going on to keep it interesting but not too much where it's overwhelming like a lot of these roll and write style games tend to do now. It kind of strikes that perfect harmony of being 
get enough going on, but not basic. And I really do like that feel and that kind of equilibrium between the two. So all in all, this one is going up for me. Um, first time I liked it, the sub, um, the times after that, I like it more and more and more. So yeah, this one is, um, is thoroughly enjoyable and I've definitely come out a bit of a surprise for me because I wasn't sure what to expect. So that is Pioneer Rails, uh, definitely a, a go-to game if you uh, like your route building style games and you do like a good flip and write. So Pioneer Rails comes in at number two. And finally, at number one, we are going back to the Jip series with Tsar. So Tsar is um, a bit more of a confrontational style game as you are randomly placing these um, tokens all over this, um, this board. Of course, you've got the two players because this is a two player only abstract strategy game. Um, and you've got the black pieces and the white pieces, but each of those colors comes with three subsequent types. And the objective is to eliminate all of one type of piece of your opponents. And it's quite interesting because each of these pieces come in different um, kind of scarcity. So some of them are, there's only a few pieces, some of them, there's loads of them. But as you can imagine, as the kind of rarer ones start to get whittled down, your opponent is going to do their best to protect those pieces and maybe take their eye off the ball when it comes to the other pieces as opportunities start to open up. And mechanically, very simple. You just have to at least claim an opponent's piece and then you optionally can take a, another move by taking another opponent's piece or even bolstering up your own pieces to make them stronger and more difficult to capture by your opponent because each of these stacks as they build up can only be taken by a stack of equal size or greater. So again, as pieces start to get um, captured and you know that there's very valuable ones on the board that your opponent wants, you can invest effort to protect that by bolstering up and up and up, making it more powerful. But of course, as you're doing that and bolstering with other pieces, those other pieces are getting weaker as well and other opportunities will start to um, arise and present themselves. Uh, fascinating game, um, super quick and punchy as you're just qu quickly gobbling up the board. It does become more strategically rich as the game goes on because you know, when you start, you're kind of going through the motions, taking all the easy captures, but then the things start to really amp up as again, you want to become more protective and seize those opportunities while you can. Um, up there would be better GIF games, that's for sure. You know, there's lots of great ones. This one's up there with probably, I imagine it's probably top three for me at this point. Uh, that is Tsar at number one. So there we have it. That concludes the video. Hopefully you have uh, enjoyed this. Lots of different types of games uh, on this list, which is why I like doing these videos so much. Now, if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel and check out my other content too. But for everybody else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye-bye.